the Montgomery Fox games are your basic hidden object puzzlers where they tell you to find something and off you go to find it. Sprinkle in a few mini games here and there and top it off with a pretty well written story that can be skipped if you fancy and you have yourself a rainy day indie that can be done in an afternoon's time. On the trophy side of life, both the case of the missing ballerinas and the case of the diamond necklace have pretty straightforward trophy list. While both games offer 14 trophies each, they do not have platinums. So if that's a deal breaker for you, cheers and see you next time, I guess. If you're down because you either really like puzzle games or you really like trophies or maybe even both, keep watching for a quick rundown on the trophies available in both Montgomery Fox games. Looking at both trophy lists, you'll notice that they are quite similar to each other. Save for the minigame trophies, they will be identical down to the trophy name and the image tile. That's actually quite fitting for how similar the two games are overall, so their trophy list should be just the same. Both games will have three speedrun trophies, one for completing a puzzle in 300 seconds, one for 180, and the last for 90. These trophies do stack, so if you earn the 90 second trophy first, all three will unlock for you at the same time. In the case of the missing ballerinas, you will have the ball, color, chase, jigsaw, and circles mini games. In the case of the diamond necklace, you will have the memory, tiles, differences, sorting, and rotate mini games. Each of these will appear at least three times as you complete the main story of the game, so don't worry too much about actually missing them. As long as you complete each one at least once without skipping, you'll get the trophies without much fuss. Both games will have three trophies related to finding all of the collectibles in the game, and fantastic news on this is that they are actually all story related. The collectible item in each level is required to complete each level, so you cannot miss these, which is music to all trophy hunters' ears, I hope. The last few trophies will be related to using hints. While you have an unlimited number available, they are on a 20 second cooldown timer, so you can't just go spamming hint to get the trophies. With that being said though, as long as you're using hints often enough, you'll get the trophies well before finishing the game. And speaking of finishing the game, you will earn the final trophy in each list by completing all 60 story levels. The game does autosave after you complete each level, so if you need to take a break or step away for a few, you can and then easily come back at any time and pick up where you left off. Overall, you'll be looking at about 5-6 to six hours to get all of the trophies in each game, which is not too bad for an afternoon. The difficulty of the list will of course be a 2 out of 10, which is pretty standard for games of this nature. If you'd like to see more information on the trophies, especially the minigame ones, links to my trophy guides for both games are provided below. As always, thank you all for watching, and if you found this video helpful, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more indie gaming content.